the standard and burden of proof here is on the defendant. And the defendant uh, has to make a substantive showing of the likelihood of prejudice by reason of uh, extensive publicity in a case. Media coverage has been pervasive, constant. It's covered even non-issues such as scheduling of the case. Uh, the Atlanta Journal-Constitution has had uh, recent in-depth podcast about the case. Uh, I believe it might be ongoing at this time. WSB Radio has uh, a daily court watch. The week before trial uh, jury selection, there was at least a one or two hour uh, talk show on drive time uh, with a call-in talk show about the case where public opinions were discussed. This is all within the press's um, uh, purview uh, uh, as a free press to address and pay attention to items that they consider to be noteworthy and of public interest. Uh, this court certainly does not disparage what the coverage has been. I only reflect that what I think would be largely agreed upon within the community, that there has been extensive publicity and press coverage of this case. The juror questionnaires show pervasive knowledge of this case. Almost, you read them, they consistently have some knowledge of the case. If some of them don't, that's the exception and not the rule. And they have a lot of information. And then the emotionality of the response includes comments such as, I hate to use vulgarity, but I believe one juror said rotten hell. I think another used the word pervert. Well, that's not vulgar. That's, that's a perfectly fine word if it, if it fits the situation, but regardless. Uh, one juror even opined that the defendant deserves the death penalty in this case, which is not an option based on the way the case has been brought to court. To say that the juror questionnaires show um, a pervasive knowledge and extreme opinions that are negative to the defendant is frankly an understatement. And then the testimony. They come to court and the testimony corroborates uh, what the questionnaires show. Although some jurors did in fact change their opinion, but about as many who said on the questionnaires they could be fair and impartial came to court and said they could not be fair and impartial. And then the other was true. Some who said they could not be, when they testified, said they could be. Um, and then we have the percentages. If you use uh, the state's uh, percentages, which are lower, you're in the 40, mid 40s. If you use the defenses, which are higher, you're in the mid 50s uh, for those struck. And then, other than a cold record and the questionnaires, what should be reflected in decision making is what happened in this courtroom. And this courtroom has not been a place of mild opinions. And a cold questionnaire doesn't give you the sense of what the jurors are saying, of how they are responding. The defendant has carried their burden to make a substantive showing of the likelihood that the prejudice uh, uh, exists uh, extensive, because of extensive publicity so that it, it would not be just to try the case in Cobb County. So I grant the defendant's motion 26 for a change of venue. Mr. Sharon and I and, and Ms. Murphy will begin taking the steps to identify what jurisdiction and what timing will occur. And I'll be calling meetings with counsel soon. <laughs>